So why, why, are, why is the fact that an electron is a wave, why is that so important? Well, first of all, because it sets up, you know, this, this detective story of the electron set up this new theory that's coming, quantum mechanics, right? Um, but also, it immediately, just like, just like we started painting with them, right? Remember, that was one of my why this matters. We also realized that we could see with them. We could see with electrons. Because, you know, if electrons are waves, then I can shine them just like I shine light and see what it shows me, right? It can illuminate matter. So, it, you know, if you look at the frequency here of light, right, this is, this is a, a electromagnetic spectrum. Radio, right, microwave, infrared, visible, UV. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you want to see something, uh, some feature size, you're limited by the wavelength of the light. It, it can't be bigger than the features you're looking at, roughly-ish, okay? That's what you're, so if you're trying to see something tiny, but the wavelength of light is really big, you won't see it. So we need, if we want, let's say we want to see atoms. Let's say we want to see atoms or, or, or even more nuclei. Look at how tiny, those are 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 12 meters. Those are x-rays or gamma rays. But the problem is if we shine x-rays on things, and we will do that when we look at, at crystals, but if we shine x-rays, it's very hard to then collect them and make a photographic image, okay? Right? I mean, at least one that gets you that resolution. It's, and, and gamma rays are even harder to catch, right? Oh, but see, here's the thing. Electrons, electrons give you exactly what you need. Because, you know, if we do this math for an electron, let's bring this one back down. If we do this math for an electron, well, I'm gonna use, ah, I thought I had the middle one. So if I have an electron, let's suppose I have an electron that is, um, electron, I'm gonna say I accelerate it over 100 volts. I'm gonna take an electron, I'm gonna put it over 100 volts, I'm gonna give it some kinetic energy, right? So its kinetic energy is then gonna equal 100 EV, right? Okay. So now I've got an electron moving with a kinetic energy that's 100 EV. Now you can convert this to joules and you can set this equal to 1 half mv squared, right? Mass of the electron times its velocity squared. And then once you have the velocity, so you get the V, and then once you have that, you get the momentum, the P, right? And then once you have that, you get the wavelength. Right? So I can go now from like something that's easy to do, 100 volts is a lot, but in a lab, safe, not in your dorm, you could apply 100 volts to an electron, get it going at this speed, and once you know the speed, you know the momentum, and if you know mv, then you know its wavelength, and that, in that case, from this relationship, you would get that it's about 0 0.12 nanometers. But look at this. The wavelength of a, a simply accelerated electron is right where I need it. It's right where I need it. It's an angstrom, right? So now I think if I take advantage of the wavelengths of, of the wave nature of electrons and I shine them on materials, then I can see materials that way and I can see them at that scale. And we do that all the time, all the time. In, in many, many different areas of technology and of research today, we use electrons to image. In fact, the best images you can get are made with electrons, right? Um, here's an example of using a scanning, what's called a scanning electron microscope, right? So you see a butterfly, but you wanna really see a butterfly. Or we can go even further. And instead of just drawing pictures of this, these beautiful materials made of carbon, those are called nanotubes. These are called, this is called graphene, gesundheit. It's a single sheet of carbon atoms. One atom thick material. Notice with these materials, every single atom is a surface atom. That's pretty cool. They also have lots of other cool properties and I'll give you examples uh, throughout, you know, in other, other lectures of, of how these kinds of materials can be used. But for now I'm talking about seeing them and this is what happens when you actually look at them with an electron. That's a nanotube and here, is a picture of graphene. 
The only reason we can see graphene is because we have electrons, and we take advantage of the wave nature of those electrons. We say, well, OK, but why does that matter? Well, that matters tremendously. Because one of the first experiments that really did what Feynman, what Richard Feynman wanted, Richard Feynman predicted the, the field of nanotechnology 50 years ago. He gave a famous speech at Caltech it's called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. He's also an amazing teacher, and he taught actually the double slit experiment. I highly recommend you Googling that lecture. And he said that, you know, someday you can put the atom where you want, right? And the first time that was done was in 1989 by IBM. They had 35 xenon atoms, they moved them around. But the point is, you couldn't realize nanotechnology, you couldn't realize the ability to actually move atoms if you can't see them, right? And so this, you know, the ability to see what you were doing changed everything. It changed everything. And, and you know, nature had been doing this, and I love these examples. So, you know, nature has been doing nanotech for a long time, right? Uh, so you have uh, the inner ear of the frog. It's a cantilever that uh, is sensitive to a few nanometers of movement. The frog can actually hear that. You've got features in the ant side. I love the, the silk moth. The male silk moth has a single molecule detection system on board that can sense a single molecule of pheromone, it can detect a female silk moth two miles away. Two miles away. We have nothing like that. <laughs> we have no technologies like that. I can't even tell if someone's in the next room. I have to look at my phone or something. This is because of nanotechnology, that kind of detection system. Right? But it was the ability to see atoms and molecules with electrons that, that kind of blew open this entire field. Right? And it's made it so that we can now try, at least, to rival nature. Here's one example. You're not just seeing graphene, but check this out. You're seeing a single atom of graphene, and you're seeing what happens under a certain kind of ra uh, irradiation. And you're seeing this hole. And you're seeing the hole grow. And that's really important. Because something I care a lot about are membranes. Right? And, and another why this matters, I'll tell you about membranes. But here, you know, I'm actually making the thinnest possible membrane that, that you could make because it's only one atom thick. And I'm controlling how I make that, but I would never know what my controls do if I couldn't see it in real time. Right? So this is, this is my, my why this matters. It's seeing things at this scale. 